In this video, what I want to do is explain a little bit about how Cayley's formula could be proved. We saw Cayley's formula back in video number 36, and we described it basically with this little example. Here we have three vertices, vertices 1, 2, and 3, and we have three different options for how we could make a tree on those vertices. So we can see that in this case, all of these three examples are really isomorphic. So really there's only one tree, if you think about isomorphisms, um, on three vertices. But if you worry about the labeled trees, or in other words, picking your vertex set to be one, two, three, so you label those vertices and then you ask how many trees are there, Cayley's formula tells you how many. So there's no nice formula that tells you how many non-isomorphic trees there are, but if you look at these labeled trees, then there's this beautiful formula that tells you. Now, I wanna give you, first of all, a little bit of an intuition for how this is proven, and maybe do that by, via an example. So the basic idea, so this is just gonna be a proof idea. Um, the basic idea is to show that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these labeled trees and something else. So what we wanna do is we wanna be able to go between a labeled tree, we'll call that T, and we're gonna to wanna to get a one-to-one -one correspondence, one-to-one -one correspondence, with something that we call a proofer sequence, and I may be pronouncing that wrong, proofer sequence. And I'm just gonna denote that by S. And this sequence is going to be on N elements of length N minus two. So what I really mean here is that the sequence is gonna have length N minus two, and each thing in the sequence can be any, not, any one of n elements. So just to give a bit of intuition for this, if you think about what would uh, a sequence like that look like, if you had n minus two slots, one, two, three, four, et cetera, you have n minus two of these, and inside each slot, you can put any number from one to n. So maybe here you put a one, and maybe here you put an n, and maybe here you put a four, whatever. Think about how many sequences there are, how many such sequences. Well, all you have to do is say, okay, how many choices do I have for the first thing in this sequence? Well, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be anything up to n. So there are n choices. Okay, what about for the second position? There's also n choices. What about for the next position? Because it doesn't matter, you could repeat. You could have a four here and a four here. There's no problem with that. So in the next position, you also have n choices and you just keep going and you always have n choices. And this happened n minus two times. So the number of such sequences is n to the power of n minus two. So if we can show that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a labeled tree and a proofer sequence of this type, so it has length n minus two and it uses n elements, then we'll basically have the idea for how this is proved. All right, so let me just give ourselves a bit of space here. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is describe a general way to go from a tree to a proof or sequence. So I'm gonna do this part. I wanna go from a tree T to a proof or sequence. And I'm gonna describe how to do it with an example. So first of all, let me explain what to do. So step number one is going to be find a leaf of the tree with smallest label. And by the way, this tree T is already labeled. That's the, that's the point, right? We're going between labeled trees and proof or sequences. So we have some labeled tree T and we're gonna go make a proof or sequence. So first thing we do is we find a leaf which has the smallest label now we're actually not gonna use that particular leaf in the sequence. What we're going to do is we are going to add the neighbor to the sequence. So I'm calling the sequence S, right? To the sequence S. 
and we also want to delete this leaf. So think about what this is saying here right now. I'm finding a leaf which has smallest label. The leaf is the thing that's going to be deleted from the tree, but the neighbor of the leaf gets added to the sequence. Now, why can I say the neighbor? Because a leaf has exactly one neighbor by definition. And remember, we can always find a leaf in any tree because we have at least two leaves in any tree. So what we do is we then continue. We just repeat this process until eventually our tree becomes, until our tree is just K2, the complete graph on two vertices, which let me remind you what it looks like. It looks like that which is also the same thing as a path on two vertices. So this is just one way to describe that. Okay, so that's how to build the proof or sequence. Let's see if we can figure it out via an example. So what I'm gonna do here is just draw some sort of tree. Uh, maybe give it some vertices out here, maybe one more out here and like that. And let's tack one here too. Okay, and now I'm going to label this any old way. Maybe you're a one, maybe you're a two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so this is my labeled tree T, and I want to build a proof or sequence. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with just having S, my proof or sequence, have nothing in it. Okay, fair enough. Now, step number one, find a leaf which has the smallest label. So maybe I'll use red for that at the moment. You might be tempted to say, oh, the smallest label is one, so it's this guy right here. That's not true because you have to find a leaf with the smallest vert label. So you look through all the leaves and you have a two, three, four, and five. So clearly two is the guy with smallest label. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna delete two from the tree. And you're gonna add one into this proof or sequence. So we have S is equal to just one at the moment. And now we consider our new tree. So maybe I'll just highlight what is the new tree. The new tree is all of this stuff. And we ask ourselves the same question. Find a smallest labeled leaf, okay? Look through here again. One is not a leaf still, so we can find three. We're going to delete that, but we're going to make sure to append the neighbor 7 to this proof or sequence. So now we have s equals 1, 7. Okay, and now we continue. So what is our tree now? It looks a bit smaller. It's like this. Everything inside of here. Okay, and again, we find something which is the smallest leaf, which is the 4 in this case. We'll delete that from the tree and we get another proof or sequence. We have one, seven, and then what was the neighbor of four? It was six. Okay, and we're gonna continue again and find the smallest leaf. In this case, it's five. We're gonna remove that five and again, append six. So now I'm just gonna move up to here. S is now equal to one, seven, six, six. And now look at what we have remaining. I'll just highlight it again. This is our tree from here to here, just these three vertices. So we look for, again, the leaf with smallest label, and we find that it's this six. So we are going to remove that six, and we're going to put in the neighbor. Well, what is the neighbor? The neighbor was one. One, seven, six, six, one. And now what do we do? Do we keep finding the smaller leaf? No, we don't because we've gotten down to the point where our tree is only two vertices. It's K2. So at this point we just stop and we say, aha, this is our proof or sequence. Right. So now we might want to be a little bit more careful and just say, let's figure out exactly why we know that this thing here will have um, length n minus 2. Why is that the case? Well, first of all, I should point out that in this example, n was equal to 7, and over here we do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things. Okay, fair enough. So it worked on our example, but let's think about why we are going to always have n minus 2 things in our prover sequence. There's a couple of things to notice. 
As you're building a proof or sequence, you should notice that no leaf ever gets appended. No leaf gets appended to S. Okay, that was pretty obvious because every time we found a leaf, we didn't append the leaf, we just appended the neighbor. But sometimes things get appended more than once. Notice that this six got appended twice. And if you think about it for a moment, you'll see that in fact, the number of times that a vertex gets appended is equal to its degree minus one. Think about it, all the leaves have degree one, so that's why they get appended zero times. All of the vertices of degree two, for example, seven, are just appended once. And all of the vertices of degree three are appended twice, etc. So in general, we actually know that every vertex V is added to S a total of the degree of that vertex minus one times. All right, so we're almost there. We are almost able to show that this sequence has to have length n minus two. So what do we do next? Well, we can say that, let's say it has n vertices, this tree, and m edges. Well, then from the previous videos, we know, well, what do we know? We know that m must be equal to n minus one because it's a tree. And let's think of the number of terms, number of terms in S. Well, that's just going to be the sum of all of the vertices in the tree for the number of times that we appended it. So you just look at the number of times you append every single vertex, and we've figured out that this number is the degree of that vertex minus one. And you sum that up over all the vertices. Okay, well, we already have seen that the sum of the degrees, the sum of the degrees of the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges. So this part right here is equal to 2m. And then we've subtracted off a one how many times? Well, for every vertex in the tree. We've subtracted off a one n times. So I'll scroll down a little bit again. And we see that this is n. So we have 2m minus n. Okay, fair enough. You might think that sounds not so straightforward because that's not what you were looking for. You were trying to show that this sequence has length n minus two. But you're almost there because remember that it's a tree. So you have two times n minus one minus n. This gives us two n minus the n, so just n. And then we have our minus two. Okay, so I hope that I've been able to convince you that in fact, given a labeled tree, you can easily make a proof or sequence and in fact, that proof or sequence will have length n minus two. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is show you the exact opposite, how to go from a proof or sequence to a labeled tree.